Hi everyone, and today it is all about uploading sewing patterns into Design Space using your iPad. and welcome back to my channel. Today I want to show you how to get a PDF sewing pattern, download it to your iPad, and even print it out in actual size so that you have something to compare with when you want to upload your pattern up into Design Space. It's a little tricky and that's why I want to show you how. Now what type of patterns could you get into Design Space? It's only going to be patterns that is going to fit on the Cricut fabric mat. So their standard size is the 12 by 12 inch. So that would accept fabric 11 half by 11 half inches. And they also have the larger mat, which is 24 inches. And you can see it's very well used because I love sewing with my Cricut maker. Okay. So, those are the type of pattern sizes we're talking about. And so things like, as an example that I have for you, um, this is the sewing pattern actually that we're going to be working with. This is a wonderful sewing pattern by Lynn's Handmade and I got permission. Thank you, Lynn, for making this available to me so that I could do the tutorial. But then also, so we're talking projects like, like cell phone purses, okay? This was totally cut out on the Cricut Maker. And then same thing with this one. Not only was this one done on the Cricut Maker and sewn, but I did the bias strips. So the handle, all of this was cut out on the Cricut Maker. And let me tell you, it makes it so much easier to make bias strips when you cut them out on the Cricut Maker. Okay, also things like this cute little pouch can be done. Um, things as big as this, um, the sewing bag that that from Lynn's Handmade is bigger than even this, and you can cut it out on your Cricut Maker. And this is a cute little sewing pouch. In fact, I was wondering, do you guys know what this is? I found it in my sewing bag, and I don't remember what it is. In fact, I pulled one out so I could show it to you. I would love it for you guys to leave me a comment if you know what this is. I have no idea, but it's in my sewing bag. So I'm thinking it must be for sewing. <laughs> I just don't remember. So yes, leave me a comment if you know what that is. Anyway, so things like uh, bowl koozies, right? My mommy made this and larger type of like snap bags. Okay. So all of these things and more can be made on the Cricut Maker, but there more and more people are making their patterns in PDF format, which makes it really easy for us to be able to take screenshots of our pattern pieces and upload them into design space because Cricut at this time cannot accept a PDF file in design space. So we have to create kind of a workaround to get our own patterns into design space, but it's very doable. Now I will preface it to say that I would much rather do this process on a desktop or a laptop computer, which is what I do. But I wanted to do this tutorial because I have done it with my iPad before and it's, it's just a little bit trickier to do, but it's doable. Um, so that's what this is all about. All right, let's get started. Well, this is the amazing purse pattern that I selected for this tutorial. I wanted to show this one because this one really is a good size bag and yet we can cut out the pattern pieces for this on our crickets. I also wanted to point out that this particular shop owner, Lindsay and Stephanie, they are the owners of Lynn's Handmade where I'm getting this pattern from. But I wanted to point out that a lot of pattern makers are now starting to also include SVG files for their sewing pattern. So keep an eye out on that. It's not always listed within the pattern. So just, you know, when you're looking for shops for patterns, keep an eye out for owners who may also be selling SVG files to go along with it. So 
in my case, I'm going to go ahead and purchase because I want this pattern and I also want the SVG files to go along with it. But the tutorial is really going to help you for maybe shops that don't include the SVG files. So this will show you how to go from beginning to end. You'll be able to download a PDF file onto your iPad and then take that file or that the pattern pieces from that file and get it up into design space so you can cut your pattern out using your Cricut Maker. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add it to my cart. I'm going to stop the recording for that part because I don't want the recording servers to see that. And then I will bring you back in when it comes time to download so you'll see how I get my purchase from the download area onto my iPad. So I'll meet you back here in a moment. Okay, so now I'm on the Etsy site and I'm in the download section. So what I did was once I made my purchase, it sent me to my email to check for my link. When I clicked on the link in my email, it brought me to this page right here where I can download my PDF pattern. So as you can see here, I made two purchases. One is for the bag, one is for the SVG files. Today I'm going to concentrate on just doing the pattern so I can show you how to get those patterns into design space. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the download. And here is our pattern. Now it looks like, let me see, I'm going to put open in. So it gives me a choice. Okay, so now I can choose what I want to open this pattern in. So you have two choices at this point that I use anyway. You can either do it in the Books app, which should show up, not the Kindle, but upload it or have it download into the Books app right here. Or I like to do it in the notes. And the reason why I like to do it in the notes is in the book app, if I need to make the, the pattern a little bit smaller, I have to do it with two hands. Like I have to hold scrunch in, squeeze the pattern piece in smaller with my left hand in order to take the screenshot on the iPad with my right hand. If I download it to my notes app, it'll automatically have it smaller or I can just switch it in and it stays smaller so I can get that needed screenshot. So that's my choice. So I'm going to go ahead and click on notes. If you have an iPad, everybody, it comes default with your iPad. So I'm just going to click on notes and I'm going to put it in my PDF pattern and create new note and save. Okay. So now I should be able to just go ahead and close out of here my notes app, which is here. And here is my pattern piece. Okay. So if I click on it, it gives you all of the pages down the right hand side. So here is your entire pattern. Also from here, you can also open in books. Okay, so from here, we've got our pattern piece. I'm going to go down to, I actually reached out to Lindsay and, and just said, I just need to show them one pattern piece because I don't want to disclose her beautiful pattern online for everybody to just take from. So I'm going to just use this one pattern piece right here. Um, but this same process you would do for every single pattern piece that's in the pattern, providing of course it's going to fit onto either a um, 12 by 12 mat or the 12 by 24 inch mat, okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is this is the, the one piece. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a screenshot, depending on which iPad you had. I have the iPad Pro, so to do that you just, uh, You've got your, you don't have a home button. You have the two buttons on one side and then one button on the other side. You're going to go ahead and press the two buttons that are closest together at the corner of your iPad, depending on how you have it laid out. And that's how you take the screenshot. If you're unsure how to take a screenshot, just Google or YouTube how to take a screenshot and they'll show you exactly how. But that's how I'm going to take my screenshot now. And I'm going to go ahead and click on that screenshot, tap on it. 
And basically, this is good. I don't need to do anything to this screenshot at this point. I'm just going to go ahead and click on Done and then put Save to Photos. OK, so I've got my screenshot so I can actually get out of the pattern. If I was to do every one of the pattern pieces, I would go ahead and just take I would go through page by page and just take a screenshot of each pattern piece and save it to your photos. OK, we're just doing the one today for the purposes of the tutorial. So now I need to get out of here. I need to open up Design Space. And I need to go to Upload because we're going to upload that screenshot. I'm going to select from my photo library. I'm going to select the picture. And this is where we just want to clean up any anything that's on the background of, the, of this image. We want to save the actual pattern piece, which is the square. And then we want to save also, if you look behind here, is we want to save this one inch square right here. This right here is just going to be showing us our progress as we're getting rid of our background over here. That's what that's for. And you can move it all around. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the background. So you want to tap on remove and then just hit the background the one time. That is good. Now we need to select erase and tap on the size of the erase and then just go ahead and rub over anything in the background that we need to get rid of. So we want to get rid of that line, get rid of this line. We can get rid of here, but we need to stop, move this out of the way, tap on the eraser again, and get rid of the rest of this. And remember, we want to keep that one inch square right there. So this is good. If you look, we've got a trans, that's all those checkerboards means it's a transparent background. And we're going to take these two pieces grouped as one into design space. So we're going to click on next in the upper right hand corner. And this is fine. We don't need to do any refining. This is if the pattern, maybe you know, this was a good quality pattern. It was created with quality. This is why we don't have to do any further cleanup. But if you had um, some areas that you needed to smooth out or refine, this is how you would do it. So go ahead and click on Next. It looks perfect. And then this is where you have a choice to do either print and cut or cut. So I have one of my tutorials um, that I already have on my YouTube channel goes over why you would want to do a print and cut and it shows you step by step how to do that from a desktop computer. The only difference is you can do the same thing with on your iPad. It's just as you know, if you're used to going back and forth from a desktop to an iPad, some of the buttons maybe are in different places, but you can do that same process with the iPad. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and save it as a cut image. So I'm going to select it and then click on, or I got to give it a name. This is a good way to keep track of all your pattern pieces that are going to end up in your layers panel. So I highly advise you name it specific to what the pattern piece is. So I'm going to do just that. Um, they are calling it the main body exterior, and that's exactly what I'm going to call it main. body exterior there we go okay so there we go main body exterior and it's up to you if you want to add that two of two that might help keep track once you get your patterns into design space okay so there's a little tip for you click on save now i'm going to select the pattern piece that i just uploaded and click on insert OK, so here is our canvas. It brings in the pattern piece into design space, and it is literally grouped right with this one inch size, which is what we want. I'm going to make this a little smaller so you can see it. Before you start changing things around, just double check and make sure this is locked. That way your proportions stay correct. It should come in locked and stay locked, but just in case you accidentally click on it, I want to make sure that before you start resizing anything that that stays locked. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to want to make, we're going to size our pattern piece 
this one inch square needs to match our one inch square grid on design space. To make that easier for us to see, I'm going to go ahead and change. I'm going to change the color of our pattern to white or actually to yellow, and that might actually make it a little bit easier for our eyes to see. OK, so basically you're going to want to keep bringing this in. It's hard to see on an iPad. Um, it's easier to see on a desktop computer, but each of these squares it is a one inch square. So basically there's four inches within this big square here. All I'm trying to do is get it exactly one inch and you'll be able to test it and see if it's one inch, but for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm not going to worry about being exact because I want to just show you the method. OK, so you'll notice that I might get this a little bit bigger than an inch or a little bit smaller. That's OK. Like I said, it's for the purpose of the tutorial. I want to get it as quick, but just know that you only have to do this process one time. Once you get it sized, It'll just stay in design space and just kind of live there. I like to make a backup and save it in design space. That way, if I accidentally unsize one, then I have backup. All right, so there we go. There is, I'm going to say that's our one inch square, and I'm going to call it good right there. So what that did is because the way that they created the pattern, they're saying that if you size this pattern piece with this one inch square, then your pattern piece will be the exact size that it needs to be. OK, so now that we've done that, what I like to do, this is just a personal preference, is I like to duplicate this piece. And then I go to my layers panel, which is in the bottom the layers panel. And then what I do is go ahead and just turn off one of those layers. I will just keep this as my backup. That way, if I mess up this one, this one will always be there with the one inch piece hooked to it. Because right now, this one, I'm going to separate this one inch piece. Once I do that, if I make it a different size, it's not going to be the actual correct size, right? So I keep this as my backup in case I mess up. I can go back here, duplicate it, bring it out and remove that one inch square. I hope that makes sense. OK, so it's just an insurance policy for me. You could go if you mess up, if you accidentally mess up your pattern piece, right? What can you do? You can go back to where you got the, the PDF file and re upload your photos. That's the only downside. So that's I just wanted to show you what I do and you can pick which one works best for you. OK, so now that we have this at one inch square, we know that our pattern piece is exactly how we want it. Now, since it's a little difficult to see if your one inch square is exactly perfect on an iPad, like I said, it's easier to do on a desktop computer. But if you don't have the option to use desktop, then if you're on an iPad, you might want to check your one inch square size. Now, as I just showed you the. square size. Now, as I just showed you the contour feature, if we use contour, that square, the small square, the one inch square would be gone. So in order to check your sizing, if you want to do it, then skip the contour method and just go right to the slice method. That's what I'm going to show you now. So as you can see, this is our, our pattern piece. I've lined up my one inch square to where I think it might be close. And the way to check it is to go to your shapes down in the lower left hand corner 
and choose a square. Now I have this square. I'm going to make it just slightly smaller, just personal preference. Just big enough to cover that one inch square is all you need, and it doesn't matter what color it is. I'm going to put it on top of my one inch square. Now remember the one inch square and this big square, they're still attached to each other. So now I'm going to make my wand or your finger so that you select everything. So I'm just going to do this, select everything. Then I'm going to go to my actions panel and I'm going to select slice. Now what that does is it just sliced everything apart from everything. So the, the big square is going to be separate and the small square is going to be separate. So I'm just going to move my square out of the way, move the, the smaller square that just came out of that slice. Just try to think of it like it's a cookie cutter. Now, if I tap on this, it's an, uh, an image all of its own. Once I tap on it and if I click on edit down below, I can see that the size of it is one by 0.99. Now, if I was cutting a bag pattern, I would be totally fine with that. Okay. At that point, I would be like, well, okay, my big square pattern is going to be as close as I can get to the original size. If you want if you're not happy with the one by 99, then you would just click your undo button until you go all the way back. And I would just do it like this, right? Just keep your shape here. Select this again, because see now it's grouped back together because we undid it all the way to this spot. And then you could move it in just slightly and then say we want to test that. So you click on your, your square, cover it, select everything, go to actions, slice, move your square out of the way, tap on the small square, hit edit, and look, now I've made it 99 by 99. So I'm getting closer, right? Okay, but there's the method. It's super easy to do. Once you know that you have this sized correctly, then your bigger square will be the exact size the pattern piece needs to be. All right, I hope this helps. So what I'm going to do is I want to remove this one inch square now that we have this sized right. The easiest way to do that is to go to contour and just click on the square and that just automatically gets rid of the square. So here is our pattern piece, right? It's ready to go. This would cut out the exact size that it needs to be. And you would just repeat that process for every pattern piece. You would just go back to upload upload the next pattern piece, do the same thing we just did. And then when you're done with that, go to the next pattern piece. So now you can see why it would be important to be naming your pattern pieces so that you know exactly what each piece is. Okay. So now I just want to show you quickly, what would you do if you, if this pattern said, place your pattern on a fold? Okay. Clearly it's just a square pattern, but what if it did? What if it was shaped differently and you needed to put the right side of this on a fold? What I would do is move this over to the left a little bit. Go to your actions panel. Um, we're already here. So if I was here, I would hit action and then you were gonna duplicate it. We're gonna bring this over. And that's the one thing I love about iPad is they have the smart grid. So if you just get it close, you know that it's lined up really well. And then you would click on, you would highlight or select both of them by using your wand or your finger and then click on weld. Now, instead of actually placing your pattern piece on a fold, you've actually folded it out and put your pattern and then it will cut out just like that. Okay, so that's one tip. Let me go ahead and then know that once you weld, remember once you if you weld and then save your project, you can't undo weld, just so you know. If you're still working in the project like we are now, I'm still working in it, I can actually hit the undo button and it's going to undo that. Okay, so let me just get this. I don't need this right now. I want to show you one other thing. And that is like, say this pattern or this size, let me go to edit so I can see what size it is. Right now it's showing as a 
10.79, 10.8. And yours might show differently because maybe I didn't get that one inch perfectly one inch. Okay, so this is just, again, for the purposes of the tutorial. Let's just say that you wanted to also cut out the interfacing at the same time, but you want the interfacing to be um, a quarter inch smaller than this piece. So the way that you do that is, for me, I don't do math like ever. So I get the calculator out. Um, you can't see it because it's on my computer. So I would put in the 10.79 into my calculator, 10.79, and I would minus it by 0 0.50. I would need to change the calculation on the left from 10.79 to 10.29. So I'm going to click on width and go 10.29. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I forgot one step. See, I make mistakes and proud of it. Okay. I'm going to take this first before we change the size of it, and I'm going to go to the actions panel, and I'm going to duplicate it. There we go. So here it would be our actual pattern piece, and we want to make this one a quarter inch smaller. Okay, apologize for that. So click this and then go to edit. It shows our, our width. We're going to change that width to 10.29. And then the height is 10.3. So I did 10.3 in the calculator minus 0 0.50 comes to 9.8. I'll do 9.8. All right, I'm going to change this color so that it's easier for you all to see. And then now you can see that this pattern piece is exactly a quarter inch smaller than the rest of the pattern piece. And that would be perfect for cutting out your insulation. So a good note or a good thing to note is it doesn't even matter if your pattern piece is like, right, if you're cutting out um, a pattern for a shoulder or for a doll skirt, whatever you're, you're doing, just take the width and the height and minus 0 0.50 and that will give you a one quarter inch difference between the original pattern size and the size if you size it down a quarter of an inch you need to minus 0 0.50 and that will get you your exact calculation that you need so there's a tip hey guys so i wanted to hop on here really quick to be able to show you something that i hadn't done before and i got a couple emails on it and i thought well this is perfect timing to do this video so what i'm doing is i'm still on my ipad here and i'm going to take us to the point of actually making this project but we're just going to cut out this one pattern piece but i wanted to be able to show you and compare to the actual pdf printed pattern piece so you can see that these pieces do indeed come out the correct size as long as you have that one inch square sized correctly. So after I had done my video, I came back into Design Space on my desktop computer and I was off a little bit because I was trying to hurry for purposes of the video. But I went back in and I made sure that everything was one inch, which means this pattern piece is the exact size that it should be. It matches up to the one inch pattern piece that they make in the pattern, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and I actually am using two different recordings so you can see me go through the make it process on the iPad. Then I'll have to switch over to my other recorder so that you can see my uh, Cricut Maker cutting out the fabric and then we'll compare the size to the PDF pattern. Okay, so at this point, I'm just going to go ahead and click make it. We're just going to cut out the one inch square or the, the actual square piece. This just to show you this right here. Let me if I can untap it. There's our one inch square. Okay, so if you remember, these squares here are actually four squares within that one square. So that is a one inch square. I'm just going to turn that layer off. And then now I'm going to click on make it in the bottom right hand corner. 
and it's just going to put it right on the mat there for us. Nothing else we need to do and then click continue. Okay, let me get maybe closer to my maker because it's on my desk behind me. Hold on one second. Okay, so click continue. There we go. And we're going to choose cotton fabric. I already have it as a favorite because that's most of the fabric that I do cut is cotton. And then there we go. So basically it's just telling me it's set to um, default pressure is fine. And it's uh, saying to load tools and the mat. So the tool that we need is the rotary blade for the Cricut Maker to cut out cotton. So I'm going to just set this. You can't see it, but I'm setting it in my iPad or in my Cricut Maker. And then I will switch over to my other recording software so you can see me cut out this pattern. So I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so here we are. I've got my iPad on the maker and I wanted to show you this is that one piece of pattern. Um, always make sure that your PDF is size to actual size and then you know that your one inch square will be exactly one inch square. So as you can see, that is a one inch square. Okay, and then that actually makes this pattern piece be exactly five and a half inches. Okay, so there's five and a half inch square by five and a half inch square. All right, so I've got my fabric loaded. I just put a piece of scrap fabric and I just use my brayer to make sure that my fabric is all smoothed out. And I will load the Cricut mat. This is the fabric pink mat. If you've never used the Cricut Maker yet, you want to make sure you always use your fabric mat. Click the load button. I've got my rotary blade in there. And when this light flashes, we press go. Okay, and it says the action is complete. Your cut has completed. I'm just going to pull up my fabric a little bit just to make sure that it did cut, and it did. If it didn't, I could always press the go button again, and it will cut a second time. But it looks good. I'm going to go ahead and unload my mat, and let's compare the size of the, of the piece. Oops, I just tore my fabric. That was my bad because of the way I pulled it off. There we go. Okay, so this piece right here, I'm not even going to take it off the mat just so that we don't accidentally stretch it for the purposes of testing. As you can see, if I measure this fabric, it is exactly five and a half inches by five and a half inches. So I think you can see that okay. Okay, there's five and a half inches. And five and a half inches there. Okay. So isn't that awesome? I mean, let me just peel this off here. I think that is awesome that we are able to obviously print, especially for like purses and doll clothes and things. So as you can see, this will fit right in here. And this, like, I mean, it wasn't even ironed or anything. I just threw it on there. And there you go fits perfectly in there 
So I hope you found this helpful. I'm glad that I I'm glad that I got that question just in time so I could sneak it in and you could see the process and be able to test out that it does actually indeed as long as you get that one it that's the part that's so important. Even if you squish, you know, or zoom down on your iPad and to get your screenshot, as long as when you bring it into the design space, as long as this you make this square an inch, an exact inch when this is still grouped together in design space, once you know that this is an inch for sure, you can just, you know, contour that out or you can slice it out even. And, but if you slice it out, you can actually save it and just turn that layer off in case you need to compare it. But remember the minute that you separate those two pieces, then you'll never know if this is correct if you accidentally zoom it in or out, right? So that's why I always keep that one layer that's hooked to one of the pattern pieces as a backup. All right, I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments. I'm so happy to help if you guys have any questions on this at all, okay? Okay, so let's say you want to print your pattern and you want it to print the actual size of the pattern from your iPad. And it can be done. A lot of people get confused about this and I was one of them <laughs> until I figured it out. There's also another thing I wanna bring up um, and I'll show you how to print from books, how to print from Acrobat and I'll show you how to print from notes. Those are three different places you can save your patterns depending on what your preference is. So I'll show you each one. The other way you can do it is if your printer has a mobile app. So if you see on my screen, it shows I print brother, I print and scan. I have a brother printer. That's the version that I would use if I wanted to print from my iPad or my iPhone. Now, this app did not work for me. Even though it looked like it was gonna print in actual size, it did not work. But I've heard that HP and Epson have really good phone apps. So if you have that type of printer, be sure to see if they have a, a mobile printer um, app for your printer. And if they do, then, you know, um, mine was free. I'm sure yours would be free as well. And try that method first. So that is an option for you. And the main thing to look for would be either actual size for your printer properties or 100% or scaling. So look for those type of settings. And I, like I said, I can't guarantee it'll work. I know with my brother, this app did not work. But this is my workaround that I figured out out of so much frustration. <laughs> there is nothing worse, right, than printing a pattern and having the pattern be tiny instead of the actual size that it's supposed to be. Now, keep in mind, this is also for a pattern that is going to fit on a legal size or a eight and a half by 11 size of printer paper, okay? That's what I mean by actual size on that size of a document or paper. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna show you is you need to be able to go bring up your printer properties for your printer. So you're gonna need a desktop or a laptop computer. Maybe a Chromebook might have it. I'm not sure, I'm not that familiar with those, but you would need to bring up somehow your printer properties or your right desktop could be a Mac computer as well. So go to your settings. I'm on a Windows computer, so I can't show you Apple today, but you should know where your printer properties are. If not, you can Google or ask YouTube where your printer properties are from a Mac computer. Okay, since I'm on a Windows computer, I'm just gonna go to my search menu, menu and I'm gonna type in printer. And here are my printer and scattern settings. I'm going to click on my printer, which is this one right here where it says toner ink low because it is actually low. And I'm gonna click on it. And I have three options here, open queue, manage or remove device. I'm going to manage it. And then here I get more options. What I'm looking, looking, looking for. for here is your printing preferences. 
from here, I have mine set to plain paper. This is my default settings, okay? So you know how when you print, you usually have the chance, the opportunity to click on printer preferences. But what was happening was every time I print from my iPad, that option wouldn't come up for me to make changes. But if you set your default settings, right, these are going to be your default settings to your printer so that it will always print this way unless you ask it to print differently per print project. OK, so what you're going to want to do is mine is set to portrait. I keep it on vivid because I, I I like it that way just for a lot of the things that I print. There's really no preference and it's not going to matter for your patterns. So just pick whichever one you decide. OK, so I just print normal quality and all this really doesn't matter so much. What does matter is go to the advanced tab right here is what my printer was not set to it was mine defaulted to fit to paper size like I bet most printers are so if you're wanting to print your pattern page from your iPad or pages then you want to go to your advanced tab of your printer preferences all printers are going to be a little bit different but so kind of you know, you'll kind of get the idea by watching mine. You're looking for scaling. This right here, scaling. Again, mine was set to fit to paper size. I changed it to here. So this is how mine was. And I changed it. You can scale from 25% to 400%. So if you guys didn't know this, this is also a way you can increase or decrease your pattern size. So let's say your pattern you printed at 100%. If you change your scaling to 110%, your pattern is now going to be 10% bigger than the actual pattern size. So there's a little tip for you too. Okay, so click here and then make sure this is set to 100. What this will do is actually print your pattern piece in the actual size that it should be. If you have an apply feature, make sure you hit apply and then OK. And now whenever you print a pattern from your iPad or iPhone, it will print in the actual size that it should be to fit a legal size piece of paper. All right, so there's that part. So let me show you now quickly how to get to the printer settings from each of these apps, depending on which one you use. OK, so I'm going to bring up the notes app and I'm going to actually tap on it again, because if I was to print from here, it's only going to print this first page. But if I tap on it again to where I see all of those little pattern pieces on the right side, it will actually now want to print the entire thing. Now, I don't want to print the entire thing. All I'm going to want to print is my pattern pieces, right? And today I'm only going to print one pattern piece because that is the agreement that I made with Lynn's was I was only going to show one of her patterns pieces. So, um, and then if I want the instructions, I'll just have my iPad sitting next to my sewing machine and that's how I can go through the instructions. So that way I can save paper. Just print your pattern pieces. So go ahead and click the up arrow the little rectangular and the little up arrow and then you go to print and then you want to click on options and then so instead of all pages we're going to tap there and i'm just going to print page 24 so one piece 24 if you were you know printing you might print something like 24 through 29 something like that OK, so I've told it to only print that one page. I'll go back, hit printer options, and then now I can hit print and it will print in the actual size. So print is right here in the upper right hand corner. OK, so that is in notes app. Let me get out of here. Now let's do it in Acrobat. OK, click on the pattern. Just like in notes, you have to click on it again. Oh wait, in Acrobat, you don't have to do that. What I can do is click on the number one, 
just so I can show you if you want to get to a specific page of a pattern. I'm going to say 24 and OK. And it's going to take me right to that pattern piece that I want to print. But you don't have to do that just to get it to print. I just want to show you how to get to a specific page. OK, so to print in this app, you want to click the three dots in the upper right hand corner. And then at the very bottom is print. And then again, select your options. I don't want all pages. I only want page 24. Go back and then hit print in the upper right hand corner. OK, so very similar to the other one. Now the last one is if you keep your patterns in books. OK, so it's already on this page because I was on it before from testing. But basically, you want to hit that share option in the upper left hand corner on this one. OK, so that's that rectangular with the arrow, the up arrow. Click on that. And then print is right there. Same thing. Go to options. 24. Woo. <laughs> and 24. Hit printer options and then print in the upper right hand corner. Okay, that is it. That is how you can print from all three of those apps. And then again, if you're using your a cell phone or an iPad app, be sure to to follow along with those instructions in order to print. I hope it works for you. I hope you really find this helpful. If you have any questions or if you know of a different app, I've heard that there's paid apps out there that you can print your patterns in actual sizes, but personally, there's no reason to me, there's no reason to pay for an app to get it to do that when you can check your, when you can change your default settings to your printer on your computer to scale it to 100%. All right, so if you have any suggestions or apps that you use that you prefer that I may not know about. I tried to do my diligent research, but I, I honestly spent three days researching this. And those were some really long <laughs> three days, but I wanted to make sure that I gave you the up-to-date information on this because I know it's very frustrating. If you go and Google, literally go and Google how to print pattern actual size, you'll see that people keep asking and nobody helps them. So I really hope this helps. And you know what, guys, basically that is it. It's so easy to do. And like I said, you know, this process, it's not difficult. It's just taking the steps in the order that you need to take them. And if you have any questions, definitely let me know in the comment section. I think I went over this pretty quick and um, I might have missed something. So I hope this really helps. I know a lot of you have been asking um, how to upload your sewing patterns on an iPad into Cricut Design Space. And I hope you really found this helpful. All right. Remember to create with love. And I hope you enjoy this pattern too. Check it out. All right. Give them some love and, and uh, enjoy your day. Bye.